Our dot will shut down a busy stretch of I-30 starting tonight. It's part of the 30 crossing project widening the interstate through downtown. The closure will include all westbound lanes between the I-40 interchange and Broadway Street in North Little Rock. Local traffic to downtown North Little Rock will use I-40 to detour to Pike Avenue. And drivers just passing through will use I-40 to detour to I-440 or I-430. You might remember RDOT shut down the 430 bridge for construction in recent weeks. Officials say total weekend shutdowns like these are new in Arkansas. However, they are likely here to stay because it prevents up to two weeks of nightly lane closures. The public seems to appreciate this more uh, as long as we're letting them know well in advance. Hey, this is coming up. Um, I think they appreciate. OK, let's go through that 48 hours of shutdown to get it done. Westbound I-30 should reopen by 5 Monday morning and it will look a little different. Here's what the lanes look like right now. Come Monday, drivers heading west will have their lanes shifted slightly to the east. And we're learning more about the fired RDOT employee who failed to report the crack causing the ongoing closure of the I-40 bridge. RDOT says that same employee led inspections on nine other bridges over the last year. A spokesperson says teams have already started re-inspecting those bridges and they hope to finish those inspections by the end of June. As for when the I-40 bridge will reopen, there's no definite timeline. Now, the thought of all that construction probably doesn't make you excited, but we have something that might. After more than a year, streetcars are coming back to downtown North Little Rock. The Rock Region Metro Service will be up and running on June 1st. It has been suspended for more than a year. It will now run Monday through Thursday, starting at 1045 AM. Friday and Saturday hours remaining in place until midnight, just in time for summer. Well, um, the summer is always a high season for the streetcar. Um, you have school kids out of school, um, people going on vacation, um, people coming into town to visit their relatives. So not just uh, visitors from out of town, but locals ride it as well. Um, kids with their grandparents. So we are really, really looking forward to bringing back a little bit of summer fun after this very challenging year that we've all had with the streetcar service. Masks will still be required, but the rides are free. The Little Rock stops won't be back until July. Now let's get a look at Arkansas's vaccine progress to end out the week. One third of the state now fully vaccinated. Another 9% have at least one dose. Still, 56% remain without the vaccine. Now that the eligibility in the state starts at 12 years old, officials expect to see the vaccinated percentages increase. Health officials say the coronavirus vaccines are helping bring the number of new coronavirus cases down to the lowest level since last summer. But there are still millions who have yet to receive the shot, leading to some creative incentives to get them to sign up. Deborah Alfaron has more details from Capitol Hill. The U.S. saw fewer than 30,000 new COVID cases Thursday. The fifth day in a row, it's been below the 30,000 mark. That hasn't happened since last June. We have seen a 20% decrease in the seven-day average of cases across the country. And we have seen some counties across the country have had an even greater decrease. The new cases have gone down as vaccination rates have gone up. And now the country's ramping up vaccines for kids 12 and older, with some schools holding vaccination clinics on campus. The kids have their own reasons for signing up. Just seeing my grandparents again, it's been a long time. More than 156 million American adults have now received at least one dose of the vaccine. And now states are getting creative to sway holdouts. Today, dating sites are announcing a series of features to encourage vaccinations and help people with that univer help people meet people who have that universally attractive quality. They've been vaccinated against COVID-19. Los Angeles County is offering a sweepstakes with free season tickets to the LA Lakers for people getting a shot this weekend. I want to go to the playoffs. <laughs> I want to go to a basketball game. That's why we're getting vaccinated so that we can do these fun things. While Maryland and New York are offering lottery tickets for people who sign up for the vaccine. Vaccin scratch. You get a vaccination and you get a lottery ticket for the $5 million mega multiplier New York State Lottery. Ohio officials reported a 28% increase in vaccinations last week after they offered a $1 million lottery prize. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, Capitol Hill. The U.S. is averaging about 1.8 million vaccinations each day over the past week. That's well down from the average high of 3.5 million shots a day last month. 
Governor Hutchinson is also coming up with some ways for people to get more shots. He says bonus checks could be coming to nearly 26,000 government employees if they choose to get vaccinated. Executive state agency workers will now be getting $100 for each dose of the vaccine they receive, including those who have already gotten their first dose. Under 50% of executive state workers have gotten that first dose, a number the governor wants to see climb into the 70s. Our state workers in many instances are providing an environment for the public to come in and do business. And we want the public to know that uh, the workplace, we're doing everything we can to make it safe. And the governor added that the state is also working on creating incentives for the general public to receive their vaccine. And if you are looking to get vaccinated, we have two clinics to tell you about. One of them is starting today. Baptist Health holding another drive through clinic for the one dose Johnson and Johnson vaccine today. The hospital's community outreach will administer shots until six tonight. Supplies are limited, so you are asked to make an appointment and you also need to bring an ID with you. And then tomorrow, Simmons Bank Arena hosting a mass vaccination clinic. Healthcare professionals will be administering the Pfizer vaccine starting at 8 tomorrow morning. You can make an appointment, but walk-ins are also welcome. People who get vaccinated at this clinic will have an opportunity to enter their name in drawings for free tickets to Magic Springs, tickets to Arkansas Travelers Games, the Foreigner concert in August, and the Banda MS concert in September. A fragile ceasefire is holding the Middle East after 11 days of deadly fighting between Israel and Hamas militants. The tensions in the region remain high. CBS's Tina Krauss reports from London. Israeli security forces clashed with Palestinian protesters in Jerusalem just hours after the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas took effect. The scuffles broke out at the Al-Aqsa Mosque where overnight thousands of Palestinians were celebrating the truce that ended nearly two weeks of deadly attacks between Israel and Hamas militants. <laughs> On the bombed out streets of Gaza, where Israeli airstrikes killed more than 240 people, some are in no mood to celebrate. <laughs> As Arna Seer says, the truce is for people who didn't suffer or lose loved ones and their homes like we did. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warns if Gaza's militant Hamas rulers fire more rockets at Israel, they'll respond with a new level of force. Twelve people died in Israel, and some residents don't think the break in hostilities will last. It's only a matter of time until the next operation in Gaza. So it will take one year, it will take two years or five years, but we'll continue to fight. In this latest round of fighting, analysts believe there are no winners in a decades-old conflict that just keeps getting repeated. Tina Krause, CBS News. The government of Egypt brokered the ceasefire deal. Egyptian diplomats will head to Israel and Gaza to ensure that it's enforced and to work on a more lasting solution.